Coomsey, before we get to our pal Brandon Douglas in the AL East report, let's get to some other headlines around the team, perhaps none bigger than the fact that Alec Manoa, John Schneider announces the Jays uh, righty is going to be back with the big club and making the start tonight against the Detroit Tigers. We were talking on the last pod and you made a good point. You were like, hey, if any other prospect put up the stat line that Manoa did at double A, we would shrug. We wouldn't even notice it. We wouldn't even know it happened. Manoa does it. Everyone kind of tries to do, and myself included, the glass half full thing of like, hey, these were good numbers, better than his start in the complex league, all that stuff. But I even said, I was like, yeah, I'd maybe give him one more in double A, bump him up to triple A, and then go from there. I was thinking return late July, like right before the deadline, so you could maybe see what you got in him before you finalized your deadline plans. They moved this timeline up a little bit from at least my perception of it. How surprised were you when you saw that news flash across? Very. I mean, I've I've been pretty open about how I thought the Blue Jays would handle this, and it turns out I'm quite wrong. I really thought that they'd really take a long term approach to this and kind of think, okay, big picture, our big our thing here is we've got to make sure this young quality starting pitcher, someone who we've kind of penciled in as being a two or a three long term, a huge innings logger for the team, like a big part of the team's future. We're gonna you know keep them down and make sure everything gets right because my worry was you know they they really don't want to keep doing this bullpen day thing they don't really have a sixth starter yeah you know, like some somebody who can come in and, and fill that role like we, we said a minute ago trevor richards yeah. pitching as the opener as great as he has been you'd really like to have him in the sixth seventh inning situations like the double header on thursday but I guess maybe the thing for Manoa is a road start against the Detroit Tigers is probably as close to a low pressure environment as the Blue Jays can find. Like it's a bit of a different animal if they were expecting him to come up against the Red Sox and pitch on Canada Day in front of a 50,000 person crowd or they were expecting him to make a start in Yankee Stadium against Garrett Cole like that kind of stuff. You know, if, if everything goes south, then then that further adds to the mental aspect of what this difficult season yeah. has been for Manoa and what those ramifications mean long term. But you're going up against the Tigers. They're not very good. Um, it's not going to be a, a, a lit up ballpark in Detroit on Friday night. Nobody cares. This is, you know, as close to a minor league situation as you can get at the big league level. And I kind of wonder if the, the hope here is just like, get him to build his confidence, remind him that he can get the job done at the major league level if he does. And if it winds up being poor, then you just have another game's worth of information you can take back to the lab in Dunedin and work on something else. I mean, there you, you'd like to get someone to fill this role. Like it would really, really be fantastic if the Jays could find somebody internally to fill that number five spot, whether it's him or Hyunjin Ryu, who um, he – we can talk about him in a minute. It appears that he's coming back from injury significantly faster than anybody could have expected last year. It'd be great if one of those two guys could come back because the Jays, you would then not have to, you know, acquire a starting pitcher at the trade deadline. You can instead use all of your resources to make the lineup better. Maybe get yourself another piece of the bullpen, another guy with closing experience in the playoffs, something like that. So I, I don't know. I, I, I don't, it feels a little bit soon personally, but I, I I still think there could be a long-term approach here. I don't think they're just going to keep throwing him out there if he struggles. But if he's good, then you just keep going with it, right? If he's bad, yeah. it's just back down, more information, more stuff to work on. I don't know. I I, I, I don't want to make a big thing of it either way. It's just a little bit surprising. Yeah, I, I'm really... And I hope I never find out the answer to my question. But what happens if he gets lit up like like he did again in that last start against Houston? Like, what do you do? I To me, I would have liked to see him come up at a point where the organization maybe says like, hey, we're giving him three starts no matter what. And I know that when you're in a playoff race, we're getting to that point of the season, almost at the deadline where every win has a bit more emphasis on it. Every game matters a little bit more. So you, you maybe can't do that. But. And maybe internally they've said this. I would like to see him have a little bit of leash. Like you need to have, to some extent, the courage of your convictions, right? If you're confident that he went down to the complex and he went down to Dunedin and he fixed some issues and he turned a corner and you're ignoring the stats from the complex start and to an extent ignoring the stats from that double A start and just saying, no, we watched him. We believe everything we told him to work on and everything we did with him is going to be effective. Then you need to give him more than one start. Otherwise, what are you saying? You're admitting you rushed him if you send him right back down after one yeah. bad start against the Tigers. So that's maybe why it's a little bit confusing for me. And 
again, to give them a start and then lead into the all-star break, like I, again, would have maybe left this till after the all-star break. Cause now what you're going to give him this one Friday against Detroit. And if he does well, you're going to put him in the, th- cause you're probably going to rejig your rotation coming out of the all-star break. You can do that. You have four days off. What is he, your four or your five? You're probably putting him behind Gosman, Bassett, and Brios, right? So you if have, you start him here on the seventh, you're not starting him again until the 18th against the Padres. I, I don't know if that's the best idea to give him 11 days off. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Like, I think I think if you're putting the rotation together, you'd probably have to split him and Kikuchi's days so they're not back-to-back because those are your threats yeah. of short outing. So you'd probably want to have it be like Gosman, Manoa, Bassett, and then like, Kikuchi Barrios, maybe something like that. It's not really a set in stone spots one, two, three, four, five. You want to have your two, and it sucks to say this, but your two weaker starters are your two options that likely don't go as long, maybe coming after or before someone who often gives you length. Those uh, Gosman, Bassett, and Barrios, of course, have done a great job doing that. But I don't know. It, it yeah, I agree. It, it, it does feel fast because, uh, like you said, if they, if he comes up and gets lit up by the Tigers, I don't really know where you go from there. Like it's, it would, it, it, it feels bad for him to come up and say all these things. He's like, you know, I got this tiger in me. Like I'm going to, you know, I got my competitive edge back. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then if he goes and, you know, pitches three innings against the Tigers and allows five runs or something like that. And then he goes back down. It's just, you're starting again with, you know, the narratives on the internet are going to be, everyone's going to be shitting on him. Yankees fans are going to be all over it. Oh, Alec Manoa is so bad. He's blah, blah, blah. And it's just going to be more drama and more crap, more psychological toll. I don't know. It, 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 it doesn't seem like the, the timing spectacularly necessary. I feel like they could have done another bullpen day here. The Tigers aren't very good. The all-star breaks coming up. Like they, they probably have the length for that. And even if like, if there was a game to punt, it's probably just game one against the Tigers after you've played the White Sox, right? Like, yeah. it's realistic. I don't know. Um, we'll see how it goes. I don't want to make too many definitive statements, but I had, I had really told myself that I thought this was going to be, you know, a long-term, slow-moving thing, and it moved way faster than I thought. But here we are. Hopefully they're right. Hopefully they saw something in that double-A start that none of us are noticing, and he's going to come up and toss a six-inning, seven-inning gem against the Tigers, and everything's back to normal.